Do you remember when Brian Griffin was like the best character in Family Guy, but now he's just this? Almost wish Carter was still blind so he'd still need me. Yeah, but he's not. But he could be. But he isn't. But he should be. Oh, no. Hey, everyone. Welcome to another video. Welcome to a Family Guy-related video about Brian Griffin. Brian Griffin is such an interesting character on this show because, man, they have just butchered this character. And if you grew up with Family Guy like I did, the show came out in the late 90s. I was born in 91. It came out the perfect time for me. I was a kid who loved, like, edgy cartoons like Simpsons, Family Guy, South Park, and all that stuff. Futurama. And I just, I, I, I got really attached to Family Guy. I got attached to the humor, these goofy characters, just the weird scenarios, the pop culture of the 90s and 2000s. Uh, just all these distinct personalities, like Peter Griffin being this a complete imbecile. And Stewie being this evil baby genius who wants to take over the world and stuff and kill his mother Lois. Uh, Meg being like the punching bag. She's like the joke. She's the punchline to every joke, especially Peter when he's farting on her. See my trapper keeper? <laughs> you have Chris, who's kind of like the weird, sexually repressed teenage boy. And then there's Brian Griffin. He is the talking dog slash alcoholic of the family. He was like the normal one out of the Griffin family. He was the voice of reason, even though he was a very flawed character, he was still the character people enjoyed the most because he was the most intelligent character. He was the voice of reason, he was the audience. He was the character Seth MacFarlane based the character off himself. He's the only character that Seth MacFarlane voices that is actually Seth MacFarlane's voice. And he just put a lot of his own personality into the character of Brian Griffin. And you can tell in the first few seasons, he put a lot of care into the character of Brian. The first few seasons of Family Guy, Brian had the best arcs, the best stories and stuff. Um, even though he was a, a like, a, definitely a more likable character in the beginning, he had his issues. There's an episode where he becomes a police dog and he becomes addicted to drugs and stuff. And... It's actually kind of a sad episode about addiction and stuff. And a therapist thinks it's his family, but no, he said he would never trade his family for anything. And it just shows the sh humanity in Brian, even though he is, in fact, a dog, but has more humanity than, let's say, the main character himself, Peter Griffin. There's even an episode about where he wants equal rights for dogs. And it's almost like a social commentary of like race and gender inequality but for a dog and there's a whole courtroom case that he wants to be treated as a human being because he is just as intelligent and just as free as a human and just it's a great episode and it shows a lot of depth within the character of brian and again even when all peter goes on his crazy journeys he's always got peter's back because he is like peter's conscience his good conscience. Like, even though Peter is done, he does constantly stupid things that puts him in danger, Brian's always there to help him out. Even when he has, like, a crush on Lois, he doesn't really act upon it. We'll get to the later seasons, of course, but he has this crush, but he knows that there's nothing that can happen because that is his best friend's wife. And he just kind of lets that go and stuff, and that's why he's, like, urinating all around the house and stuff. Um... He's just always there, and um, Peter even says that Brian's like a better dad to his children than he is, that he knows more about Meg, Chris, and Stewie. And even when Peter, like there's an episode where Peter goes missing on an island, he takes care of Lois and all the kids and stuff. Even when Lois supposedly dies, he's there to help the family out. Brian is just always there for everyone. And even though he might have his jackass moments, he was still the character that we believed in, and we just always wanted to know what Brian was up to, even when he goes on his journeys with Stewie, because like, their relationship is just so bizarre. It's a talking baby baby and a talking dog, but they build this like 
a really great friendship with each other and he betters Stewie as a character that Stewie is maybe he's like this evil genius that mur wants to murder his mother but he turns Stewie into more of a likable character and a more loving character he's not just this evil genius and stuff he, there's actually a lot more death to Stewie as well <laughs> and Brian brings that out in Stewie that's why my favorite episode is when they're locked in the safe and they talk about each other and how much they mean to each other and that's why I always loved Brian as a character. I thought Brian was the best character in Family Guy. However, they changed that. They did a complete 180 with Brian. And they made him probably one of the most despicable characters in any cartoon series. And that's saying a lot because Eric Cartman exists. <laughs> I love Eric Cartman, by the way. But he's meant to be a dick. But, um... Yeah, I don't know when this happened. It might have been around when Seth MacFarlane left Family Guy as, a, like, a writer and producer. He's just a voice, just does the voiceover. But he left around, like, season 8, season 9. And I, that's when Brian was changing a bit. And he just was doing these horrible things to people. And then they killed him off. And it was definitely the most, like, controversial thing because everyone hated that they killed Brian off. But honestly... I thought it was a really good set up to his character. You, you've given me a wonderful life. I love you all. Like, I thought that was a very powerful moment for Brian because even though he was he he was growing to be an unlikable asshole, they killed him off with some dignity a little bit. <laughs> he does get hit by a car, but you know, kind of in a way like a lot of dogs do and stuff, but. When they bring him back, they, they amp his asshole raider up to, like, a million. Like, let's just do the list of things that this, this character does. Like, uh, one of the big things is he tries to basically take Lois away from Peter. Even though I would say Peter is a horrible, horrible husband. But he, like, attacks Lois. Almost, like, weirdly, like, very inappropriately. And I'm like, what, well, what's happening here? <laughs> like, this is really weird. And then he becomes a neglectful father to his son. His son wants to be in his life, and he just ignores him. And then when his son gets a job at a television show, he wants to be part of the show as a writer, and he basically uses his son to get a job like a complete asshole. He also gives Stewie herpes. <laughs> I'm like, what? <laughs> what is happening? What, what is Family Guy doing? I, I, I just, it's weird. There's also uh, an episode where he gets brand new teeth and he becomes a real estate agent and he scans Quagmire out of all this money, even though Quagmire was the person who helped him get his teeth back and he helped him even though Quagmire hates Brian, but he basically screws Quagmire over and there's no reason why he does it. He just wants money and stuff. There's a whole episode where he goes on Wall Street and they're making these products out of dogs and he is a dog and he just doesn't give a shit about it. And I'm like, wow, what a dick. <laughs> There's even an episode where he writes a play and it becomes a very famous play and he's almost famous from it. And then he acts like this pompous dick that he's better than everyone. And then when Stewie writes a play, he tries to lie to Stewie saying his play is terrible. So like this... It just shows the condescension with Brian and how much of just a jackass he is. <laughs> and there's like there's another episode where he uh, he's um this is when he's like hated on the internet and I think he like broke his like leg or something and he's working at this like office job and this girl that he likes he's trying to ask her out but she keeps saying no and because she says no to him he like plants drugs on her and she gets arrested and i'm like what <laughs> it's like just because she wouldn't go out with him and then there's oh god I, I, the list goes on there's another episode where he goes out with this older lady and everyone starts making fun of him that he's going out with an older woman and i don't think there's anything wrong with that but he like cheats on her though and she's like super nice to him and she's just such a loving character and he just cheats on her for no reason just because he wants to sleep with a young girl and that's another big thing about ryan brian he just he just hooks up with all these girls and doesn't care about the repercussions of them all there's even a there's another episode oh god there's, there's so many 
another episode where Stewie is going to this little daycare and this girl's babysitting these kids and she's neglecting all these children and bad things are happening that one kid gets like kidnapped and like this this woman is horrible but brian doesn't do anything about it because he wants to go on a date with her so he doesn't care that these kids are being neglected but when he when he finds out she has a boyfriend then he calls the cops on her like <laughs> this is like this was like the most likable character of the show and they make him this horrible person this terrible human i think quagmire just says it the best and you're such a sponge you pay for nothing you always say oh i'll get you later but later never comes and what really bothers me is you pretend you're this deep guy who loves women for their souls when all you do is date bimbos yeah i date women for their bodies but at least i'm honest about it i don't buy them a copy of catcher in the rye and then lecture them with some seventh grade interpretation of how holden caulfield is some profound intellectual he wasn't he was a spoiled brat and that's why you like him so much he's you god you're pretentious and you delude yourself by thinking you're some great writer even though you're terrible you know, I should have known Cheryl Teagues didn't write me that note. She would have known there's no A in the word definite. And I think what I hate most about you is your textbook liberal agenda. How we should legalize pot, man. How big business is crushing the underclass. How homelessness is the biggest tragedy in America. Well, what have you done to help? I work down at the soup kitchen, Brian. Never seen you down there. You want to help? Grab a ladle. And by the way, driving a Prius doesn't make you Jesus Christ. Oh, wait, you don't believe in Jesus Christ, or any religion for that matter, because religion is for idiots. Well, who the hell are you to talk down to anyone? You failed college twice, which isn't nearly as bad as your failure as a father. How's that son of yours you never see? But you know what? I could forgive all of that, all of it, if you weren't such a bore. That's the worst of it, Brian. You're just a big, sad, alcoholic bore. <sighs> Bravo, Quagmire. That's one thing I like about Quagmire. Uh, he's not a likable character, but he knows he's not the most likable character. He tries his best, but he knows he's a womanizer, and he uses women for sex. But he's like, at least I know what I am. You pretend that you're this good guy, but you're just as worse as I am. That's why I kind of love Quagmire that moment. And yeah, it's crazy. And I think the big question is why? Why did they do this to Brian? Why did they make him this? He started off with this as this like complex character with a lot of depth to him, and there's a lot of demons in him. But he's a very at his core, he's a very likable kind of character. He's a good friend. And he's, he's a good dog, and he's almost like a father figure to all the kids in the family. They turn that into this womanizer, neglectful person who just uses people and just thinks he's so smart and better than everyone. So why did they do that to his character? And I think a lot of the reason is is probably Seth MacFarlane himself, because they knew Seth MacFarlane left, and they just didn't know what to do with his character so they basically just said, let's just make him the joke character. Like, he is just this jackass, and let's just give a crap. Like, let's just make him a dick, and that's the, that's the joke, that he's an asshole. And that's that's what they did with him, and I just don't like that they did that. And I, I it literally destroyed his character. Like, nothing interesting happens to Brian now, because it's just all unlikable stories. He is just a pompous full of himself prick and it killed his character it's the death of a character like the family guy is still going and he is still such an unlikable unwatchable douche and i hate that they destroyed his character it sucks because he was my favorite character and now he is legit my least favorite character as of now in current family guy when i watch the reruns i love him after like season nine he is an asshole a complete asshole. Unforgivable asshole. But yeah, let me know in the comments below. What are your thoughts and opinions on Brian Griffin? And do you think he's still a great character? Do you still love him as a character? Or do you think he was never a great character? Let me know. Comment below, let me know. And as always, if you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. And join the dark side.